basically, basically credit control is divided into two functions. Uh, first is what we call you must check. Okay, the control area where assessment comes in. Okay, you must know uh, your adapters, so called. Okay, who, who are your adapters? Okay, what do they do? How, how good they are in terms of financial? Okay, in terms of <coughs> uh, the liquidity, in terms of the ability to pay. So this part is very important, the first part. Okay, so that part can be, of course, done by your bosses, by your, if it's a small, medium enterprise, your owner themselves, okay? He or she may be doing it, okay? Because he say, I know this friend, I know him for a long time, I trust him, so I give him credit, okay? So he wants 100,000, 200,000, a million, you know, I give it to him and then he will pay me 30 days later, okay? But nobody pays on time, I know, right? So you have to chase. <coughs> So the other part is actually the collection part, okay, where <clears throat> somebody has to do the collection, okay, whether the salespeople, the accounts, or some dedicated uh, salespeople, okay, it doesn't matter. That part must be collected. So credit management is very simple. It's actually two functions. One is your adapter control, assessment, and you have them in, as adapter, open account. Of course, if you do cash, like KFC, McDonald, and uh, Burger King, you don't need to have credit control, okay? Because it's all cash basis or credit card, right? <clears throat> so it's only where you do on terms, open account, okay? And this refer not just Singapore, but across the world, everywhere where you give credit, okay? So the first part is actually the most important. You must check, assess, okay? So if you give to a bad uh, account, credit, asking for trouble all right so this is what we call it if you all want you all can go into my website okay uh i i will tell you my website uh, i'm also the president of the credit association of singapore okay the website is called www.sacm.com.sg okay i repeat uh, www.sacm dot com dot sg okay sacm stands for singapore association of credit management okay so in my president message there in that website uh, i <clears throat> define the whole credit management process into two sentences two simple sentences which so-called define the two function of every credit people that do credit okay to have highest possible sales, that means help your company achieve highest possible debt. Okay, means sales on open account. Okay, and the other sentence is collect it in shortest possible time. Okay, I repeat, uh, the goal and mission of every credit practitioner is summarized in two sentences, okay? to help your company business achieve highest possible debt or highest possible sales, okay? And have it in shortest possible time. Are you following me? I hope so, huh? Okay, shortest possible time is debt collection, huh? okay? Collect it as fast as you can uh, in terms of preventing bad debt because if you don't collect fast, the company go under and close shop, that's it. Okay, so very simple. Okay, highest possible debt means assessment, means uh, credit control, watching your debtor, finding out how they are doing, day in, day out, okay. So concentration should be given, of course, to the big one, okay. The biggest exposure should be your priority. Get to know them, okay. Visit them if you can. Okay, buy them lunch, buy them dinner, whatever. Okay, find out what they're doing, how they're doing. Okay, then at the same time, collect the money. Okay, then the, <clears throat> the second part is the collection. Of course, collection, my course will cover even legal expense. Okay, you do it properly. <clears throat> I have a video, a 20 minutes video, how to do it right over the phone. Okay, because we cannot afford to be visiting all our adapters. 
Okay, since impossible task. Okay, that visit should only be <coughs> restricted to very big account and those account having problem. Okay, other than that, phone call will do, send out email, letters, reminders, whatever. Okay, and then the phone call will come in handy because phone call you get response from your doctors what is happening, find out the reason of non-payment <coughs> and help them. Okay, if they need installment plan, offer installment plan. All right, that's how it's done. Okay, so of course the cost is quite detailed because the first part, I will also cover how you do a credit analysis, how you do financial ratios. Okay, what do you look for? Okay, the important part of it. Okay, the practical part. And then if you don't have a financial ratios, what, what do you look for? If you don't have financial, how do you assess whether adapter is good or bad? Okay, like visiting a adapter, you know what is happening. <clears throat> and you assess out in terms of the premises, the, 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 how many people they employ, okay? How busy are they? You know, what do they do? Okay, so all this will be given in terms of notes in the handout. Okay, what, what are the pointers there we should look for in a visit? All right, and of course, the whole thing, uh, some of you may not know, <clears throat> in the Accra, for Singapore company, in the Accra, we are able to find out the owner behind the company, okay? I'm not talking about MMC, uh, MMC, we can find them in the internet, okay? Most of the big ones, but the private company, the individual, uh, so-called owner-run company, uh, you know, in the Accra, we can actually, <clears throat> there's a feature there that we can actually see what other business he owns, uh, what, what are the things that he has to support his business. Okay, so all this will comes in as part of the assessment process. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, anyone in the, uh, uh, any questions so far? I have only three, four people inside. Uh, the rest are not in, eh? seems like. Uh, Avantis. Avantis course uh, coordinator. We ping, are you there? Huh? There's only four in, is it? Uh, there's, there's 33. Oh, 33. So many. <laughs> more and more. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, you have the course outline. Can we flag it out? Then maybe I go through it briefly. What I will um, cover. The course outline. Ah, the, um, the, the course, uh, uh, what we call it, the course outline. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the minute, participant uh. can see, yeah. So we can go through it briefly. Course it is a is is a whole day course, so I cannot cover in detail. But at least they know what I will be covering here. But it would be good if if they can ask some question actually. Then it, it's not that I'll be the one talking all the time. Mr. Go. Yes. This is me. Eh? Yes, me. Okay. Uh, can you uh, elaborate more on like, uh, because uh, for us it's more on um, uh, preschool, so we're collecting fees. Are you to, able to elaborate on the aspect of uh, in this field, like uh, how to approach parents to collect their areas? Oh, preschool, uh, this will be more consumer collection. Okay, uh, that one, of course, you have to be a bit uh, sensitive about it uh, because come to individual is very personal. So, of course, phone call will be good. I'm sure you have the phone number, everything, right? <clears throat> yeah, so you call them gently and remind them that it's due. Okay, and uh, uh, I'm sure you have recourse. Uh, are you part of the government enterprise? If you are a PAP one, you have to be very careful because there is, of course, political con uh, consideration. Okay, but if you are a private one, 
you know, like the, all those that, that are doing, of course, it's very commercial. So you don't have to uh, consider the politics part of it, lah, you know, because I used to be in the grassroots before. So I, I know the sensitivity of debt collection on, uh, you know, citizens and, you know, people that are uh, in the ground here. <clears throat> so if you're a private enterprise, of course, there is always uh, the legal recourse if they're too stubborn, right? There is the small claim court. I don't know whether cost fees is possible. You you aware of the small claim tribunal? Yes. Yeah, small claim tribunal. Uh, I you have to check because there's a website called small claim tribunal. Okay, I mean for those stubborn cases, uh, that have parent don't want to pay. You know, even how you call them, how you remind them. Uh, even uh, I don't know. Do you visit the parent? Do you have admin people who can make a visit? Uh, as you mentioned, it's quite sensitive, so we are avoiding doing no, to do that. Visit. Yeah, of course, the staff one. Then after many calls and many email reminder or letters, and they still doesn't want to pay. Of course, you can uh, pay a polite visit, lah. You see, that's what I do for my debtors when I was a credit person, credit manager. So I make a, a gentle, you know, a nice polite visit. You know, to talk about the debt, you know, and see what happened. You know, see how we can help. If they are really in trouble financially, uh, need help, then offer installment payment. I think that is one way. Yeah, three installment will be the the way to go. Yeah. Oh, does that help me? Me. Um... Uh, I mean, we cannot, we cannot, of course, outsource because your kind of industry, uh, if you want to outsource, also can. There are collection agency that are gentle, not the rough and tough. Huh? Uh, you know, if you want some recommendation, you can drop me a, a note. I can give you some recommendation. Okay, I used to work for Dun and Bradstreet. You heard of Dun and Bradstreet? Uh, the, no. The largest debt collector in the world. Uh, American firm with a Fortune 500 company uh, called DNB, Dun and Brad Street Singapore. You're going to go to the website. They do what we call diplomatic debt collection, recovery for people, even they do for banks. Okay. Then there is, of course, uh, Collectius, C O L L I R E C T I U S. Collectius is part of the uh, Collectius group, European group <coughs> that are already in Singapore. Uh, then they do debt collection also, yeah, in terms of uh, consumer debt lah, as well as business debt. Right? So what they do is <clears throat> they are full-time people, so night, night time also they work. So they go gently knock on doors and ask the debtor to pay, you know, and they can do it almost every other day. We don't have the time, right? So these outsource people are good because they can do it. Of course, they don't do it like the, those uh rough and tough debt collectors, which I don't encourage. But I mean, you hear in the papers, you hear in the paper, they hang picket and, you know, flesh pain and all that. Those are, no, no, okay, forbidden tactics, okay, not not allowed in Singapore. Okay, okay so I these are that. professional collectors that helps you in terms of time. Uh, we don't have the time to do it, they can do it. All right. So if you need <clears throat> some of this contact, you can, uh, Drop me a message on my mobile, which is 985631100, or send me a, a note in my email. My email is very easy to remember. It's George Go, no dot, uh, George Go combined at email.com. E, uh, electronic mail.com. Okay, it's part of the mail.com, the Microsoft uh, free mail. Right, so it's George Go at email.com. Right. If you forget where it is, just go to the Singapore Association of Credit Management website. You can find my email there. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, just drop me a note and then I'll give you, you know, the contact to call and for help. Lah. All right. Okay, any others who are inside this wine burger, you need help, you just go to the Singapore Association of Credit Management and, and uh, look at it. And, you know, the, the whole oh, if a community of credit people there. Uh, I happen to be the president. They elected me last year and this year, okay, because what you call it is not, it's a, it's a job that has no salary, okay, it's a volunteer uh, community service, 
and I'm with them for a long time, ever since I started in credit as a credit officer way back. You know? So I was in the committee for many years. So inside there, you will get in touch with a lot of people who do credit. Okay. All right, let's uh, <clears throat> okay, go through this, uh, this transparency or rather this PowerPoint presentation, the takeaway. Okay, to collect that effectively and confidently. Okay, the whole day workshop will deal with uh, delaying and non-payment excuses. Okay, the typical excuses that uh, debtor give all the time. Okay, and how to overcome it. Of course, to recognize reasons and excuses. There's two different things. Huh? Okay, the common excuses, the boss away, la, you know, uh, nobody to sign the check, uh, you know, the usual thing. Huh? So how to recognize them and overcome it and politely, effectively overcome it and get to the real reason why they are not paying. Okay, because with the reason, knowing the reason, then you can actually uh, help them to solve the problem and get your money. Okay, of course, our goal is in that collection is to get our money. Okay, and in this time of, I mean, this virus COVID is, uh, is terrible. Okay, a lot of companies are delaying payment. Okay, and not just delaying, long overdue. Okay, how, how do you handle it? You know, what are your recourses? Okay, how to get over it? <clears throat> okay, and get this difficult customer to pay up. All right, and then of course, <clears throat> uh, the next point is collect from financially distressed debtors. Okay, a lot of them are in financial distress, I would say. All right, too many now. Okay, so how, how do you handle it? Okay, we will try and cover it. All right, and then grasp the importance of strategic of credit collection management and the commercial and business awareness. Okay, of course, in collection, there are two parts of it. I mean, two, two different people you collect from. One is like me, one is the consumer, individual. Then, of course, the other one is the, the business aspect, like the company uh, debts. Okay, so we must collect. Okay, and in that, in, in my course, I will cover why is it important. Of course, the main reason is cash flow. Like, okay, because if you don't collect the money, your company will be in trouble. Right? You can't survive, you can't pay salary, you can't pay your overheads, you can't pay, you know, your, your, for your goods. Okay and all the infrastructure that your company need, okay, to pay for. All right, so these are some of it. And then, of course, <clears throat> I will share on the, what we call return on investment in receivable. Okay, that one's a bit technical, but uh, how you calculate. Okay, so <clears throat> then in that also, I will be measuring like credit performance. How fast are you collecting your money in terms of uh, number of what we call it DSO, day sales outstanding. Okay, those are very universal measurement of all, all the credit people doing it. Okay, how fast are you collecting? And then if you are doing it, you can measure yourself. If you have a team of collectors or people doing it, your sales team, then you measure the performance and reward them accordingly. Okay, give them some incentive. Okay, that will help. Okay. Okay, the next point is master the art of debt collection through the phone and the three phases of debt collection call. Okay. In this one actually is a video which I'll be showing, a 20 minutes video. And after that, we will discuss. Okay. Basically, it's a kind of a video workshop. Okay. Then we talk about the three phases of debt collection. Like, you know, before you even pick up the phone and call, what you must do, you must prepare. Right, you cannot just blindly call the adapter without knowing who the adapter is. Okay, so you must prepare the call, then making the call correctly, then thereafter the follow-up. Okay, so this this will be all discussed in the, the, the session of the video workshop. Okay, and then successfully implement a proactive and practical credit management and debt recovery uh, strategy to address delay and non-payment. Okay, so we will talk talking about types of debtors, non-paying debtors, okay, and how to handle them, right? Next will be understand different methods of collection, 
uh, including negotiation of debt. Okay, here we will be uh, <coughs> talking about, you know, beside phone during the visit, what can you do? Okay, then what, what about uh, legal? What about debt collection agency? Okay, so all these will come in, in in the discussion. Okay. All right. Then the next is, uh, <clears throat> of course, making your collection effort produce better result. Okay. Uh, some groundwork. <clears throat> of course, sometimes if you have a big team, you may want to abbreviate all your uh, IT so that next person who take over that portfolio of debtors will know what is happening and can follow up. All right. Okay, then we will be talking about <clears throat> the legal part. Okay, this legal aspect will be reserved to the end. Uh, so these are for some very stubborn debtors. You know, despite many phone calls, even visit persuasions, still very persistent in not paying. And of course, before you go legal, you must do some preparation by investigation whether the debtors are able to pay. Because in the end, you can be spending a lot of money on legal and you collect nothing. So why waste money? To good money chasing after bad, right? So the legal perspective, all these will be discussed in, in that section. Okay, what are the procedures actually uh, available? Not just Singapore, but across Asia Pacific, uh, because my background very interesting. When I worked for Dun and Bradstreet Street before, I have done hundreds of cases in the legal, legal part. Okay, and my client can come from Europe, can be America, uh, for debtors in this part of the world. Okay, and vice versa. Okay, so the legal part <clears throat> comes in, and of course, I use uh, quite a number of lawyers in my past, so I know how they work. Okay, the lawyers actually do not talk to your debtor. They do not negotiate. Okay, so during the legal part, also I'll be touching on negotiating out of court settlement. Okay, with your debtors. Okay, don't leave everything to the lawyer because the lawyer, if you hire a good lawyer, fine. The good lawyer will try and protect you in terms of legal costs. Try not to. Uh, have the case blown up so that you can charge more fee, right? So I have quite a number of uh, good friends, lawyer, who are very reasonable. Okay, so any of you need a good lawyer, you let me know also. Okay, I can recommend you uh, a couple of them who are quite reasonable and one or two of them do talk to debtors on your behalf. Okay, of course, they still have to contact you because you are the client. So they must know what is your your perception and what do you want to do with the debtor. Okay, so during the legal process, you so-called persuade legally the debtor to pay up. Uh, but at the same time, don't leave between your lawyer, you should also call the debtor and negotiate our cost settlement. Okay, because the further you go in the legal process, the more will be your legal fees. Okay, so if you can like cut short it in terms of demand letters and out, the debtor talk to you, and then you offer the debtor maybe installment plan and they're happy with it and you can close the case right collecting the, the, the installment right but of course if demand letter don't work then you go to the next step what is the next step the next step is a summon okay someone goes the debtor has to fight okay if you don't fight you will get the judgment and they're very fast then you can execute the judgment by seizure and sale and all this right so we'll talk about this part Okay, but with a view to uh, out of court settlement, uh, of course, the whole thing is to recover your money. All right, then of course, the next part is the effective letters, the uh, fax, the email, the, you know, all this, uh, keep it short and sharp, you know, how to, you know, sample be given, how to uh, uh, have this uh, email effectively sent, okay, and getting the desired result. All right, okay, and the next one is the right decision in debt collection and increase your organization ROI because return on investment in receivables. Okay, 
All right, and then use different depth collection technique to different situation design, especially for your customer. Okay, so these are the whole thing there. Anyone, any question on this key takeaway and uh, collecting that effectively and confidently? Can we have some feedback? Okay, quite a lot inside still, huh? Okay, good. Uh, can we have the next transparency? Can I have some question, anyone? Okay, let me get out my some of my PowerPoint presentation. Ah, huh? you'll just hold on. Can you all see this? Anyone? Avantis course co coordinator? Uh, you must um, use the screen share, share screen function. Share screen, uh, where is the share screen? It's the screen? Green, green button. The green button, uh, let me see where's the green button. Can't see the green button. Eh? Are you using your laptop? I'm using, let me see. Yeah. I'm using the open office. I'm using okay. my laptop. Yeah, I'm using a laptop. Yeah. Uh, it, it's up already. Really. Uh, how do I back it up? Um, you see beside post, there's a share screen function. Let me see. Ah, huh? oh, okay, share screen. Yes, I saw it. Okay, is it up? Yep, we can see. Okay. Okay, good. Huh? All right, this is a one of the, the the slides which I'll be sharing in the workshop, the whole day workshop. Okay, and this one I like to highlight because these are very important now, especially in this period of COVID uh, virus. Okay, so doing your debt collection process, which you all should be doing also from home. Okay, if some of you are working from home, of course, next week. Uh, many offices are very opening up. Okay, in fact, I'm going back to work also next week. Okay, whole day. Uh, of course, safe distancing is important. Okay, so when you have any of these signal appearing in your 
uh, that collection processes be careful because means your your customer is in trouble okay so like check return for insufficient fund okay is one of the uh, uh, what we call it danger signal a bounce check okay of course beginning of the year sometimes people write the year wrongly uh, that one you know is cause for concern because it's technical error but bounce check for no money in the bank account uh, that is serious because you have to act fast and uh, I can emphasize again that uh, bad debt do not happen overnight okay is we waited we don't take action to recover money uh, we procrastinate and bad debt happen okay so when you have a check return for insufficient sun it should tell you there is a danger this company may close okay we don't act fast okay so what do you do when you have a bounce check uh, of course you must start chasing call up and if necessary if you pick it now uh, somebody must visit the company to find out what is happening right before the company disappeared or close shop all right so the key in that recovery actually is speedy speed very fast you have to act fast okay the more the company in trouble the more you must do in order to recover money okay the next danger signal in here is called customer is never available okay uh, he is uh, avoiding your call he could be in but you leave message for callback doesn't bother to return your call okay that is another signal okay so how many times must you call i would suggest three four times you leave messages doesn't call you back I mean, it's only professional courtesy, business courtesy, when you leave message to call somebody back, right? So if the debtor just ignore, just refuse to call you back, it means something is wrong, okay? So it is a danger signal. Okay, getting slower and slower as time goes by in the payment, okay? Getting more delinquent now, we call it, okay? It's another danger signal. Then offer partial payment. Of course, he pays you, say, half first. Of course, take it first. Okay, but that tells you that something is not quite right. Okay, then you should be quickly, you know, so called raise the alarm bell. Okay, and uh, check what is happening. Of course, here we'll go back to the first part. Remember, highest possible debt. Okay, that means assessment. Uh, assess the debtor. Okay, where to find Accra you pull out, who owns the business deal. You know what is the financial like if you can get financial pull out the financial and see what is happening okay and then you can take proper action right you don't just collect blindly okay but uh, with a purpose okay then of course post data check if the debtor offer you pd check we call it of course take it right but then find out what is happening okay post data check means <clears throat> i can't pay you now but i posted it another month later or another two weeks later whatever it is okay that is another signal or danger then frequent broken promises promise you payment end of the month but month and income you don't get your money uh, some worse they found dispute for you uh, unfounded dispute that means not genuine dispute okay in order to delay payment okay which is no good lah. okay then key people quitted okay who are the key people in the company usually is the or the head of department usually okay like i give you a personal example i had one where i was a credit manager in hotel okay <clears throat> so this marine company actually was a medium-sized company of course local owner and one day the uh, <clears throat> finance head the finance chief okay i visited the company a couple of times to talk about payment because it was overdue by 90 days actually so the sum is not say very big no very small it's 20 30 000, 20 to 20 plus thousand okay and uh, <clears throat> one day he called me on the phone and say uh, uh you know he want to talk to me so i was very happy you know so then he said he is not in his office then I say, where are you? I say, he's downstairs, my hotel, passing by, remember me. So he say, 
come down, he got something important, tell me. Okay, so of course I went down and then bring him to the pub, have a drink or two. Okay, then he announced to me, it's actually about 5.30 p.m. in the evening. Then he announced to me, it's his last day. He has uh, quitted, okay, the company. Okay, he has left. So officially, he's no longer in the employ of the company. Okay, so then I said, you're going somewhere else? He said, yes, of course, he's taking a breakfast. Okay, then I, I asked him then, okay, that's very good. Okay, then he announced to me that he, 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 he has to warn me that I better do something quick, fast, or else I will never see my money. I had to write it off as a bad debt. I say, why? Why is that so? You say, oh, uh, the company is closing. Okay, the owner want to close it off. Okay, I will not be paying any debt. So with that, with that uh, important information, I have to act very fast. You see, I told you, company do not close down overnight. Okay, it will take time, some time. And the bigger the company, the longer it takes to wind down the company. So if you act fast, and if you are early bird, catch the worm, so-called. Okay, so immediately I took a legal action next day, asked my lawyer, issue a summon. Okay, the court process must be followed. Huh? You cannot just, you know, go and seize the thing. So I go through the whole process, which is a couple of months I got it. Then one day before seizure and sale, okay, the next day seizure and sale, uh, the one of the director called me and said, can you come and pick up your check? You know, the payment is ready. So I was very happy, okay? But then the thing is, the check will bounce, right? Because if you pick up the check, tomorrow your seizure and sale, you cannot go ahead. So what happened? But I cannot say don't pick up the check, right? Right, so it was very interesting. So of course, somehow through my process, I learned a lot of things. Then I know that there's a process called mark the check. So I quickly mark the check, which this process with a bank, is you can clear the check the same day for you, okay? Then it, it, it appears that the company is trying to be funny. The check actually bounced. So if I have collected the check, I cannot go ahead with the seizure and sale tomorrow, right? Then I got to delay another few months, which later on the company could have pushed off, okay? But then the thing is I mark the check and I find that the, the check is no good. So I can go ahead, seizure and sale and force the company to pay. But in the end, instead of seizure and sale, go ahead next day, I call the company again, the, the, the director who called me and tell him his check is no good, right? So I was fortunate because they put in the money later on in the evening or before the bank closed and cleared the check for me. So because of, of the, uh, the knowledge of all these processes, I'm able to recover the money. All right, okay, so this is an example of, uh, of the key people with that, okay, that finance manager did me a good favor. Uh, so telling me, see, so the, all these are important things. See, you, you must always be on your toe, manage the debt, we call it. That's why it's called credit management. Okay, then the next danger is, of course, the buying pattern. Sharp drop or changes in clients buying be behavior. Okay, so these are, uh, actually will be shared in the process, okay? Okay, then of course the next uh, one, analysis of balance sheet, we'll go through all this, okay? How you do all this uh, profit and loss statement, uh, auditor's note, we look at auditor's note, okay? This is the so-called, even if you are not so-called uh, doing the approval, this is comes in handy when you are collecting from adapter and not paying up. You have to get the financial if you have it and then see what is happening. Okay. Then next one is, of course, we'll be talking about credit committee, how to set up a, uh, a group of people to help you do your job better. Okay. Like who should be in a committee. Okay. Uh, what do you talk about? What's the agenda? Okay, and this committee meeting should be regular once a month and not more than an hour each time because you will have many important people inside. So you cannot afford to have a long uh, whole day session or half a day. 
okay, one hour. Okay, so are we uh, so called sharing how you can have this community up and running to help you in your credit management and debt collection. Okay, then of course we talk about securities. Okay, uh, letter of credit. Okay, how do we take PG, bank guarantee, corporate guarantee, property mortgage, charge on assets, and all this. Okay, personal guarantee. Okay, and of course, credit insurance, which I'm doing day in, day out. Uh, what does credit insurance do for you? Okay, so those who have credit insurance is very happy because they can get back 90% of their loss. Not 100%, but 90%. Okay, so it's not a replacement for good credit practice and uh, good for major bad debt protection, now we call it. Okay, so if your debtors of course, now it's a bit of a problem because if you want to buy on bad debtors, it's not insurable. Okay, it's just like health insurance. When I'm suffering from serious illness, of course, I cannot be insured anymore. Okay, the same. All right. Then, of course, I'll be sharing some daily, weekly, monthly report, uh, which is very important. Okay, how do we measure all this? All right. Okay. Then the next one will be the system of debt collection. Okay, how do we, uh, you know, what kind of devices do we use in each stage? There are actually four stages in the uh, debt collection system in personal routine, in personal appeal, then personalized appeal and drastic action. Okay, and the collection devices we use like statement, sticker, rubber stamp. Reminder letter, telephone, okay, and visit is in the third stage, okay, and then of course, when all these don't work, uh, you still need to collect your money, then we use the so called stronger action, like collection agents, the year action, okay. So, collection agents, uh, uh, I will give you some example, okay, legal action will go through the whole process here. Of course, we don't have time to cover right now because it's a one hour uh, wine burger, but this will be discussed in the whole day seminar. Then of course, negotiating our settlement. What do we ask for in the negotiating settlement? Okay, and then you have to factor in cost because certain stage of the legal process, the lawyer will charge you money. So we must recover from the adapter. Okay, if you want to settle. Uh, then of course, collection agency alternative, what do they do? Okay, and then of course I put here reputable, means that collection agency you must use reputable one. Okay, because you use the wrong one, the agents damage the debtor, you have problem because you'll be sued. Okay, then some of the example like office attack, home attack, social attack, family attack. Okay. Okay, I'll give you some example like office attack. Okay, you imagine if you are the debtor, okay, if you are debtor and two, three debt collector come to your office, okay, wearing t shirt, okay, and in front they print, I'm here to collect a debt, okay, and behind the t shirt, all of them uniform, huh? the, the t shirt put there will not leave until collected. How do you feel if you owe the money? Okay, very embarrassing, right? And nothing wrong with that uh, because that one is permitted under law. Because they don't write on the wall, they don't write anywhere else but on their own their own personal belonging, uh, which is the t-shirt. I'm here to collect a debt, which is true because they got the letter, so-called appointment letter from their client. Okay, and they will not leave until collected is the problem. Of course, those who know the law will chase them out of your premises. Uh, then they will go out to the main road and just hang around there. Uh, without making too much trouble you know, for people. Uh, without any, uh, not making a nuisance for like All their talk are recorded in the voice uh, recorder, which they put in the pocket. Okay, and they just hang around 24 hours. Okay, so very effective. Okay, all this psychological pressure tactics. Then home attack. They go to the home and knock the door. Of course, I will share with you what do they do, the proper one. Okay. Then of course, social. 
Okay, when you go to a golf game, I mean the adapter goes to a golf game, they will just follow la, and the appropriate time they'll talk to them to pay. All right, so then family attack, how do they attack the family? Okay, so all this will be discussed in the uh, so-called uh, <clears throat> yeah, course workshop. La. Okay. All right, so roughly these are all the things and through it all we'll be doing uh, some what we call uh, some homework, some uh, hands-on kind of evaluation and all this. All right, anyone, any question? Okay, we have the last uh, five, ten minutes for any question. All right, Avantis, cost coordinator, anything? Hello? Uh, no, I think that's all. That's all, huh? So yeah. if not, then I think I think should be enough. Nobody, any question? Oh, wait, only... let me show something. Okay. Yeah, so um, if you are interested, you can scan the QR code here. Ah, okay, yeah. so those who want to sign up can do it. Huh? And of course, maybe you want to put in the Credit Association website also lah, uh, for them to you know find out more about uh, the credit uh, management process, the whole community of credit people there. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Okay, all right. Ken, thanks a lot, everybody. Okay, feel free to 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 contact Rina. Rina, right? You are Rina. Uh no, I'm Abigail. Oh, Abigail, sorry. Okay, Abigail. But you can text Rina. How, how is Rina? Rina still yep, still okay? Yeah, yep, doing good. Uh, uh, doing good, huh? Yeah. yeah. But tomorrow, I mean Monday onwards, all will be working, right? Yo, or yeah. work in team. Yeah, back back to work. Uh, on team, huh? Yes. Yeah. So so Monday I'll be going into my office, huh? Uh, maybe for those who may want to know what am I doing, actually, I uh, am president of credit association, yes, but my full-time job, actually, I'm with the mystery and company group. Lah. Okay, I work for a, a broking house, uh, which is called Pana Harrison uh, Insurance Broker, okay, Pana Harrison Asia, okay, uh, this is a uh, 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 <clears throat> so-called a broking house that is located in Singapore and of course in Hong Kong, we have our subsidiary and of course two others uh, in Taiwan and in uh, Myanmar. Okay, and the Mystery and Company Group actually has 500 companies around the world. Okay, they own three insurance companies, MSIG, uh, MS uh, uh, First Capital, a Canadian company which they bought over in Singapore, and of course MS Amblin, which is a Lloyd's insurer. Okay, who can do very big uh, government-owned single risk, okay, up to millions, yeah, no problem. All right, <clears throat> so uh, basically that is my full-time job, okay, and next week uh, we work in team, you know, half team, uh, half, a, half a week and the other half. Okay, so I'm very still very much in touch with uh, credit control and debt collection. Okay, my clients are actually credit people. Okay, all right. Uh, Abigail, anything else you want to add? Hello? No, no nothing else. Okay, nothing else. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, tuning in to Weinberger. All uh, right, so hope to see you all in the course. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. Thank bye. you, Mr. Go. Bye. Bye, welcome. Okay, da, Diana, yeah, bye. Thank you.